My name is Scott Laurie and I run the Scott Laurie Gallery here in Graylin in Auckland. One of the things we love about Top View is you can view the gallery from the palm of your hand quite literally and have a 3D guided tour around it. We also put the titles in there as well. It's a terrifically handy uh, little piece of digital technology and you don't need any instructions on how to use it. I run a show every single month and this show is particularly special. It's called The Tasman. And the reason it's called the Tasman is because I represent artists on both sides of the Tasman. So half of the represented artists I show are from Australia and the other half are from New Zealand. What this show tries to achieve and highlight is the differences in style and culture from those two countries, really separated by this little body of water. So let's start by introducing you to some of the highlights in this show. This artist here is Claire Brody. Claire is based in Sydney and she's a landscape painter. But you're probably thinking, well, where are the trees and where are the plants? This is reductive landscape painting, which means Claire goes out there into the countryside. She does lots of studies at different times a day and she reduces the forms that she's experiencing in the countryside into very two-dimensional flat surfaces like this. So there's a huge emphasis on form and shape and also colour. If by contrast we compare that kind of work with Patricia Piccinini, Patricia is one of the most important artists working in the world today. She's had over 100 institutional shows in the past 12 years um, and we've represented her for three years now. She made these ink drawings for New Zealand for the show. So we've got something very, very special here. She's very interested in ideas of nature, in human existence, in empathy, and also things like genetics. You can see some of the bodily forms coming through in this stuff. By contrast, some of the younger artists from New Zealand include Monique Lacey. Monique works with cardboard, cardboard boxes to be more specific, almost like the ones you would find in the supermarket. She then uses a resin and plaster um, substrate to kind of petrify them if you like. And so they're the antithesis to minimalism. She often uses her body weight to crush these then things into a particular form. Behind us we have uh, Sefton Rani. Sefton is heritage, is from the Cook Islands, his father was born in the Cook Islands and at first glance these look like tapa. And what these actually are, he calls them as industrial tapa, that is they are made from paint. These are actually paint skins that have been dried and then he's rolled a tire through them to get those beautiful edges. You know, and the traditional kind of colours using blacks and reds and white, you'll notice the negative space between them and um, becomes an essential part of the work. Moving to this one, by contrast, an Australian artist, um, Sally Gabori, who passed away in 2015. Sally Gabori is one of the most important Australian Aboriginal artists in the 20th century. She only picked up a paintbrush at the age of 80. She had a 10 year career and she painted wonderful pieces like this. This is called the Birdby Country, and it celebrates, and this gives an idea of how old this culture is. Um, this celebrates the rising of the waters after the last ice age, um, when the Birdby, the rock cod god, could swim between mainland Australia and Bentinck Island, where she lived and worked. It's a beautiful, painting and gives a clue about the, the kind of um, age of such an important culture. Rebecca Wallace is one of the rising stars in New Zealand art in terms of her painting practice. She's been painting for over 20 years now. She's really hitting her strides. And these works are done on silk um, and she uses a substrate that sits on top of the silk. Their ideas around obje objection and ideas around separation. So you can see the work is literally folded on and back off itself. By contrast, you have um, a, a new rising star in Australia called Benjamin Aitken. Benjamin has been a finalist in the Archibald Prize twice in Australia, this year and last year, and also a finalist in the Sulman Painting Prize. And that's a big deal for someone of his generation. I intentionally 
put him next to one of the leading senior modernist painters in New Zealand, and that is Roy Good, and this beautiful tall work, which um, is from 1974. And I thought, what a beautiful contrast to put a 47-year gap between this painting, which was painted in 2021, and this one, which was painted in 1974. This is at the tail end of modernism. It's pure um, geometry, all done by hand, and, um, and displayed here for the first time in a few years. So I'm thrilled to show something of this calibre in the gallery. And then finally, we have Kirsty Lillico from Wellington. Kirsty is very interested in architecture. She's very interested in the floor plans um, around architecture. She's taken a floor plan from a building here and she's draped it in a way that becomes somewhere between a drawing and a sculpture and then photographs it. So it has all of those elements inside it. It's a beautiful, lyrical um, work, which I find um, very, very exciting. This show is on at the gallery until the end of June, so if you can get down to Greylin, please come and visit us. I'll talk you through the work anytime.